Talks of fixed testimonials and claims of police interference are gaining an arguing point for the defense when former cabinet minister Shane Gibson's extortion and bribery case resumed today. Affidavits were submitted last month suggesting that some degree of witness coaching and evidence alterations took place making any submitted evidence tainted. In fact, the defense today argued that it was absolutely improper conduct for the police to have conducted meetings with the Crown's key witness, Jonathan Ash, against Gibson to allegedly coach him on the evidence. Gibson's accused of receiving $610,000 in bribes from Ash. He was initially charged with two counts of conspiracy to commit extortion, two counts of conspiracy to commit bribery, 15 counts of extortion, 16 counts of bribery, and one count of misconduct in public office. However, all but the bribery charges were dropped earlier this year. In other news this evening, the brazen shooting death of Police Inspector Carlos Blatch, a reminder of how daring criminals have become and how police have to up their approach to take them down. And according to Assistant Commissioner of Police Clayton Fernander, that calls for being more vigilant and knowing some background about a specific individual. As we deal with criminals, we get to know them. And we could almost say if a crime happened based on the ammo, we could identify possible suspects right away. We be creative in how we execute. We try to be a step ahead of the game. We look at, thing, at the crime trends, look at the crime trends, and we evaluate it, come together as a team, and then we put our strategies together. So you will see operations, operations, operations. On the issue of crime trends, ACP Fernando reiterated this bit of advice to business owners. Know what is going on around them. Uh, don't uh, leave or travel with large cash or leave it uh, in the store. Uh, there's always a way to deal with that. And I always say to business owners, to get to know your commander, your aerial commander, build that relationship with him or her because any assistance, even if closing time, if something suspicious, reach out to their commander. They will send a car there to you and ensure that you get into your vehicle and you move away from that. Or if somebody is hanging around. The warning follows a number of armed robberies here in the capital, some of them at business establishments. A case of deja vu at the Linden Pinling International Airport's U.S. border and control section, days after three Americans were charged with failing to declare more than $50,000, another U.S. man was arrested on the same charge. In this case, the funds totaled nearly $37,000. The man was subsequently taken into custody, handed over to the police, and is expected to be charged before a magistrate later this week. Meantime, another person's missing. Family members are hoping you can help find 35-year-old Aaron Dudley Smith of Stack Avenue, Nassau Village. Based on an August 24th memo, Correctional Officers Staff Association President Ryan Wilson shared dozens of officers were notified of their acceptance into a BJC program. The courses began September 10th. The minimum requirement to become a correctional officer, five or more BJCs, including English. This compared to police officers who must have no less than four BGCSEs at grade C or this segment of the news was brought to you by Alive.